Hello, everyone. I hope you are having a wonderful AWS Summit. And tonight, when you go home, I hope that you get to have a nice, peaceful night of sleep afterwards, having learned a whole bunch. But what if there's a problem? What if your pager goes off 20 minutes before you want to be in bed? How are you going to feel? Are you going to feel anxious? Are you going to feel nervous? Or are you going to feel confident that you got this and you're going to be able to solve it within half an hour and get back to sleep? This is what we're about at Honeycomb. We're about helping software engineers like yourselves debug their systems with the power of big data. This capability is something that we pioneered and call observability. Observability is a socio-technical capability. It's something that really enables us to answer any question about our systems, even ones that we hadn't thought in advance to ask. It requires us to add data and collect it and store it economically, and then to query it as quickly as possible when you need it the most. And what do I mean by as quickly as possible? I mean you should be able to answer any question in less than 10 seconds so you don't get distracted by going to get a cup of coffee, and so that you can keep on iterating on your train of thought. We think that observability requires having as much context as possible, and to have all of that context connected together, threaded together into user requests that are traced through so that you can follow the breadcrumbs. And we believe that you need to be able to analyze all kinds of customer experiences, good and bad, so that you can figure out what is differentiating those and how can you resolve the issue as quickly as possible. So our product is differentiated by its scale and speed. Our customers get a lot of value out of us when they're able to quickly and instantly get results. And analysts agree that we are a leader in the field of APM and observability. So how does this actually work under the hood? It starts with high quality telemetry data, which we collect in partnership with AWS. Using services like the Relational Database Service or CloudWatch or any number of services that we integrate with in the AWS ecosystem, we're able to get data at the low level but it's also crucially important to have telemetry that is collected, for instance, with the Amazon distro for open telemetry that comes from your applications and your real user requests. Once we have that data ingested, we're able to go ahead and analyze it and store it. So we pre-process it and upload it to Amazon Simple Storage Service, and then we're able to analyze it on the fly with AWS Lambda. So over the past 10 years, Honeycomb has grown really explosively. How explosively? Well, three years ago, we were ingesting about 200,000 trace spans per second. Today, we are peaking at 2.5 million trace spans per second. And our customers are asking 10 times as many questions, about 10 times as much data. You can see where this is going, right? So, how did we scale our services economically? And oh, did I mention, we only have 50 engineers. The answer is, we built on the right AWS technologies. So this is what our architecture looks like. We have a combination of stateful and stateless services, and they're mostly written in Go, but you'll also find some Java and some uh, Node.js running in our stack. But all of these were able to be migrated on to AWS Graviton technologies. So let's start with the stateless technologies. So we use Amazon Elastic Kubernetes service to manage our stateless workload. And the nodes that are powering it are EC2, C6G, and C7G instances, powered by Graviton2 and Graviton3. So let's take our ingest service, for instance. When we trialed moving from fifth generation EC2 instances to Graviton2, we saw a 10% improvement in the median latency, that we were having many fewer tail latency spikes because the Graviton2 processor is just much more efficient. And we were able to push much more load. But it gets better. 
because when we did an A-B test of Graviton 2 versus Graviton 3, we found a further 10 to 20% improvement in tail latency and a 30% improvement in our throughput and median latency of our ingest services. And not only that, it turns out that this workload just bin packs much better with EKS and Graviton 3, that the CPU utilization is about 30% lower, which means we can push it a lot harder. And it turns out that you can compound this savings by using EC2 spot instances because the node termination handler in EKS allows you to just gracefully fail workloads over as, e as EC2 spot terminates the instances. So we save money by being flexible. How does that work? Well, it turns out that when we went from fifth generation to sixth generation, we saved about 20%, and then we saved a further 20% when we adopted sixth generation instances powered by Graviton2 with Spot. Our columnar data storage is powered by EC2 M6GD instances. When we switched from the i3 instance family to the M6GD instance family, tail latency went down by two-thirds. And also, we are tier data over to S3, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So speaking of other data storage mechanisms, we use EC2 IM4GN instances to power our Kafka streaming data ingest. And these instances were newly announced at reInvent this past year, and they're powered by Nitro SSD. So we had a problem before that we didn't have the right shape to scale with our workload, where we stream data, and we need to make sure that we get it right the first time, but we don't necessarily access the older data until there's an emergency. So we were disk bound, running 30 instances of i3EN. We started tiering the data to S3, which helped, but then we saturated it in CPU. But right sizing everything onto IM4GN lets us hit our network, CPU, and storage thresholds appropriately. OK, so about this, the query retrieval, how do we make it fast? Well, one answer is just use more M6GD, right? That only works up to a point, because if you have millions of files stored in S3, you're going to have a hard time querying them all from even just 100 servers. So we utilize AWS Lambda in order to query on demand millions of files from S3 with tens of thousands of parallel workers, which allows us to give you results for any question you might ask about your systems in less than 10 seconds. And with AWS Lambda and Graviton combined together, we see about a 40% improvement in price performance, which really enables us to economically give our users the comfort of knowing they're going to be able to get a great night's sleep. So to sum up, AWS enables us to go fast. With AWS, we're able to build quickly and help our customers move quickly too. We've saved over 60% versus fifth generation instances, and also, as you heard earlier, we also have 60% reduction in emissions from using Graviton2 and Graviton3. So we've scaled 10x over the past three years without blowing our SLOs and without blowing our cost budgets. If you're interested in learning more, you can check out the chapter of Observability Engineering on our data store. And you can go and get all of the meaty technical blogs and details at the link that's on screen right now. So now I'll go ahead and turn things back over to Martin. Thank you very much.